Today we're going to demonstrate how to use the CK Arrow elevator alignment tools, why they're important, and uh, how I use them to check stabilizers and elevators. What we have here is Brett's Allure bike. Um, I'm here actually visiting Brett just to inspect the you know, airplane and do some general maintenance on it. And you'll see how I have the, the sticks laid up. What you have to do, what's very important to do, one of the steps, to get the sticks to work for you accurately, is align the tips of the stabilizers with the elevators. And it seems like a simple task, but this is the most critical in the task to make sure you have a, a, a very accurate setting. The problem is, uh, the servo, or nowadays, have a, a really stiff gear train. So to get it at neutral with the radio off, as close as you can to neutral, and the tip line up perfectly, is difficult. So you have to spend some time moving the elevator until you, you can get the, the elevator to, to line up with the stabilizer accurately and then kind of pass your fingers. If you feel any edge at all on the tip, you have to address it because once it comes out on the stick, just two, you can detect two or three clicks of trim on a, a very fine setting and your sticks won't line up. So you have to accurately set this. Now once I have this set and I'm satisfied with the setting, Using the stabilizer, I mean the uh, the servo and the stabilizer and elevator to hold it in place, hold it steady. I lock it in with a small clamp. Now I've already aligned the other side, so we're going to go ahead and lock that side in as well. Use the lightest clamps you can find, but generally something stronger than a clothespin because we're going to put a little bit of weight with. Uh, the incidence meter to figure it out. I want to introduce this little jewel here to you. This is a DXL 360S. This uh, incidence meter or inclometer actually reads to the hundredth and uh, it was introduced to me by Jason Arnold. It's the same weight as a Wixie pretty much but it's larger. Now because I try to keep the weight on the stabilizer as light as possible, I use the lightest bar setup, which is the roll bar. I do keep my, my little base mount for the Wixie on here, but I have um, I also make a larger bar here, uh, a bar mount for the for the, the tool. But when you're measuring the stabilizers, you have to be as accurately as possible, as accurate as possible. And because this thing reads in the hundredth, I try to take about take out any um, any influence on the measurement that can read in the hundredth. So if I use a bar and I use my Wixie mount and I use this, there's a possibility that I could be a half a tenth off. And it doesn't seem like a lot, but for stabilizers, it's really important. So I, I get out of all of those situations by using just the, the meter. Now the meter has a little groove on the bottom that that fits and works perfectly if you balance it right on the bar. The bar, I try to keep all the weight up front off of the elevator, even though this, the elevator is supported because the servo is in place holding it steady at zero, and I have the clip here, it can be influenced if you put too much weight on it. So this is how I've, I've come to um, get the most accurate reading for the tools we have available today and what I've kind of come up with. So you'll see first thing you turn it on. Now these don't really come calibrated to zero from the factory. You have to find a surface to calibrate these, even the Wixies. And what I do is I use the, the Robar digital analog meter and I have another meter similar to this that does come calibrated and I calibrate this meter at zero against the other meter. And the reason why that's important is because I use this at zero to measure my CG because I want the airplane to be set up at zero and then I know exactly where my CG is at and if it's two tenths off your CG is not correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance this meter here on this bar kind of 
unmind it a little bit. But you'll see that we're 1.48 degrees. Now, this isn't the actual reading of the stabilizer because I just got the airplane set up on a table. Uh, but what I, all I'm doing right now is I'm going to match all four sides of the stabilizer to that reading. So what I'm going to do from this point is I'm going to bring it to the tip and I'm going to measure what the tip says. So 1.48, 1.49, it'll drift a little bit, 1.5, I give it some time to settle in. I'm not worried about that hundredth so much. If I can keep it in the hundredth close to that reading, I'm happy. So I'm going to say it's 1.49. It's drifting here, 1.5, 1.49. And I'm going to move the bar carefully to the tip. Now the problem with the tip is it's such a small span that, it's, that the accuracy is influenced uh, by any movement at all, any, any twist or any, because you're measuring the smaller and smaller area. The wider you go, the more broad the, the inaccuracy can be. But when you get down to a small reading like this, it's important that you run the parallel of this bar as close to center of the parallel of the fuselage as possible because if you run the bar here and you don't pay attention to it, it can be a, degree, a, a tenth of a degree off. So just by eye, I'm thinking this is about right and I'm going to get behind the airplane and just kind of run a parallel. So I've, I've taken rulers before and measured to center, but I've kind of got a knack for it now, but you may want to use a ruler. So I'm looking at the parallel of the airplane, and if Brett can come around here and just kind of get a shot of this, and I think some of the parallel in the cameras may give it a bad effect, but I'm going to use my best judgment here on what parallel is. Looking back at it, this is really close. Okay. Now I'm going to put the meter back on it. What we're seeing here is one tenth of a degree difference between the root and the tip. We were at 1.49, now we're at 1.39, 1.38, it'll probably settle in at 1.39. Now at this point we can double check our parallel and I'll show you why that matters because maybe I'm off, maybe I'm, I'm not really parallel to the center line and it affects how the reading of the stabilizer is. Now you're saying, well one tenth of a degree, that, that's, that's really close. In reality it's not very close on a stabilizer. Perfect is close. So you want it to be the same reading as much as possible. Now we're at 1.4. So we're, we're less than one-tenth of a degree different between the root and tip. Okay, now this has me curious because I've measured these stabilizers once before and they were perfect. So even though that I was pretty certain that I've got the stabilizer and the elevator set perfectly, I'm going to take another stab at centering this because I feel like it's a little bit low very small, so I'm going to readjust this center. Okay, I feel more comfortable with that. I think that's better. And I think we'll get a closer reading. You can see now that it's perfectly set. So I'm going to lock it back in place. Now before, remember, we had our measurement was 1.49 at the root. I think we're going to be at 1.4 now. Now you see that big number never changed at four tenths of a degree. But we cut that number in half. 
Now we're at 1.44. By just that small adjustment there, that was almost imperceivable by the finger. But I knew, I've checked the stabilizer before and came to the conclusion that it was really close. Now if we can get the stabilizer within a half a tenth of a degree root and tip, that's really good and it's about as good as you can expect. This airplane's a year old, it's been in the sun a lot, things change, things warp. So I'm happy with that. So we're at 1.45. Now we're going to recheck the tip. I don't want this video to bore you. I want to impress you with the fact that you can have a perfect airplane and how to find out how to have that perfect airplane. Because it's important. All right, I'm going to adjust this to here. Part of the problem is to get accurate measurements all over the airplane, you have to use the same bar, the same arms, the same mount. Everything, if you change anything, if you use two meters, if you use two bars, there's an influence of small differences. One tenth of a degree is a lot on an airplane. So I try to use the same bar, the same mount, the same tool, and one of each. That way I know for sure that I'm getting accurate readings. This side did change just a little. We're still down to one tenth of a degree. Even though I made the adjustment to the elevator, this side, we're at nine tenths difference, now we're back at nine tenths difference again. So, um, it's coming, it's climbing, maybe we'll get to half a tenth. That's the importance of this meter. This meter is accurate enough where you can read in half tenth measurements. It's drifting just a little bit. Okay, I can conclusively say, the best I can measure it, this, air, this, this stabilizer is about a tenth off between root and tip. Now, we're going to go to the other side. We're at 1.45, and I know this stabilizer is off because I've already put the sticks on it and seen it was off. It's off by about two tenths of a degree, so we're gonna we're gonna verify that with the meter, and then we're gonna make an adjustment. Okay, now if you come and look over here, Brett, you'll see that that stabilizer is at 1.73, 1.74. So we're three tenths difference between the stabilizer sides. Now Brett's been flying this airplane. He's happy with it. It's got some mixing in it, and he's telling me about you know this this knife edge has a little bit of mix. This knife edge on the other side has the opposite mix, but it goes away in the center of the rudder. And I knew instantly what the problem was. It's in the stabilizer. The, the biggest problem is how to find it, how to measure it, how to adjust it. That's why I made these tools for the stabilizer. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check the tip of this other stabilizer and see how close it is. Hopefully it's one-tenth in the same direction as the other side. If that's the case, we have an evenly, evenly set up stabilizer. We just have to match the centers. So I'm going to check the outer tip. We're going to do it the same way. Good. We were at 1.74 on this side, we're at 1.87, so we're two tenths off on that tip. This tip was one tenth off, this tip was two tenths off, and it's in opposite directions of the other tip. So we have a small warp or small small twist in the tip. 
Now, okay, now, now that I've showed you that this side over here is more positive with the meter than this side, I'm going to demonstrate it to you on the sticks. Okay, we, we turned the airplane around so we can give you a little bit better lighting, but if your bread will shine the light, well, come a little closer here where you can actually see this. If you remember right, this right stabilizer was two tenths more positive than the left stabilizer. This is how the sticks tell you that. So, generally what I do, before I pull the meters out or anything, I throw my sticks up there, I accurately adjust my, my tips on my, my stabilizers to make sure they're perfect, put the sticks on the airplane, and see what the sticks tell me first. The sticks is kind of like a, a rough analog check. And then, if the sticks tell me I'm wrong or the, the settings are wrong, I make sure that they're calibrated. I go bring them to the calibrator that I have on my desk, make sure the sticks are reading right, put them back on, and if it still shows that, that's when I pull my meter out. Well, today, doing the example, I had already checked the stabilizers with the stick and I knew they were off, and, it, and the sticks and the meter both told me the same thing. I'm two-tenths positive on this right side. Now, on my airplane, two-tenths positive is about a half a turn on the adjuster. It's not a lot. So, I wanted to demonstrate how accurate the sticks are in reading two-tenths of a degree, how to measure a tip and a root, and, and oppose that of each other, and I'll tell you that I've worked really, really hard with Extreme. I've made all these tools basically to find these problems with Extreme manufacturing. Uh, the airplanes, we worked hard on our molding. We've, you know, I've gone through three or four different sets of stabilizers to try to mitigate this problem. But over time, because the airplanes are so lightly constructed now, over time in the heat, you have to address these problems and you have to stay on top of it. The moment the airplane gets to where it has a, a poor inverted elevator feel and you move the CG around a lot and it doesn't make any difference, the airplane starts pulling to the canopy in a vertical, those are the indicators that you have a stabilizer that needs to be adjusted. So now uh, we're going to flip the airplane back over and I'm going to make the adjustments with the, with the screws and we'll verify the adjustments with the sticks. Okay, I just made an adjustment to this right stab. If we remember right, this right stab was a couple tenths off, like two tenths off at the root. So I made the adjustment and it's kind of, it's been going back and forth from 299 to 3.0. You'll see it now, it'll, it'll vary back to 3.0, 298. That hundredth is not as important as that nine, but that hundred is, is you want to try to get, see now we're at 3.0 again. 3-1, so it, the meter is accurate enough that it'll, it'll measure the small differences. So I'm, I'm happy with that reading at 3.0. Now we're going to read this other side, and we want it to be as close to 3.0 as we possibly can. Now, I know that there's a half a tenth of warp in one root, and I've under adjusted this side slightly to compensate it for that one half tenth. But I want to make sure when I measure this side that it's around 3.8 3.08 is where I want to be. Three point zero five. We were at three zero on this side, so we're like we're a half a tenth. I'm satisfied with that. Now what I want to do is put the sticks back up here and see what they say. If you remember right, this side was low, this side was high. Now we have visual verification, we have a meter verification that the stabilizers are as accurately adjusted as we possibly can. Now if we would have had a warp greater than one-tenth, I would have went in there and heated it out and, and put formers in there to try to adjust for that, but we're, 
the warp is really a, like a half a tenth warp from tip to tip in opposite direction so it's, it's a total of one tenth and it's really really hard to trace that down or chase it down and and correct it because as soon as you get back out in the sun the airplane the, the stabilizers will waver a little bit so now at this stage this is as corrected as we can possibly make it now you take your sticks and start adjusting your endpoints on your elevators and you'll see a dramatic, uh, a dramatic difference in how the airplane flies inverted how the airplane tracks on knife edge especially under heavy knife edge loads uh, doing you know FAI style maneuvers and how well the airplane will track now on the upline so I hope you enjoyed the video I, I, I try not to make it as boring as possible because you start talking and and, and getting in the weeds like we're doing here and people lose interest but it's really it's really the most important aspect of setting up an F3A airplane uh, and it trickles down to every class so if you can have an airplane that flies really easily inverted that, that helps you in every class and then you start flying knife edge maneuvers if you don't have to use a mix on your airplane or fight a mix to roll fight a mix to to uh, you know, have a, a nice upline. Uh, this allows you to put the CG where the airplane, where you can. It gives you a broader range to run your CG. When your stabilizers are warped or off or crooked, you have to run the CG forward at least five percent to numb that effect. What makes the airplane hard to fly? It makes it hard to roll. Makes it hard to fly inverted. So the the number one criteria for trimming and setting an airplane up should always start with the back of the airplane.